All right, big news from pharma giant AstraZeneca this morning. The firm has agreed a vaccine supply deal worth over $1 billion with the United States. AstraZeneca, which is working with researchers at Oxford University, will initially supply 400 million doses and has secured capacity to produce up to 1 billion doses. Subject to trial results, the first deliveries could come as early as September. I'm excited to say joining us now, AstraZeneca CEO Pascal Sorio. Pascal, fantastic to uh, have you with us and congratulations on this deal. A huge bet from the United States on the success of this vaccine. Yes, good morning, Julia. It is a bet indeed, uh, but it's also showing that world speed is working and uh, that the US government and in particular Secretary Eza are leading. They are leading for the American people, but they are also leading uh, the world. Um, this is a bet, but if you look at it, the investment is absolutely worth it relative to the economic damage, the social damage, and the medical damage this, this uh, epidemic, this pandemic is uh, inflicting on everybody. I couldn't agree more with you, sir. Just talk me through timings here in terms of deliveries to the UK, deliveries to the United States, and I mentioned the September date. How soon could we have substantial mass-produced doses in each of these countries? Well, we will start getting substantial doses by September, October. Um, and I would say about 30% of our deliveries will take place uh, starting in September, October and the balance will arrive by December, January. Uh, so a very, very short uh, timeline, if you will, and, and lot, lots and lots of people will be able to be vaccinated before the end of the year. Wow, so based on that timeline and the numbers that we're talking about here, again, if this vaccine is successful, we could have the entire UK population, the entire US population potentially vaccinated by early next year. Yeah, first of all, we, as you said, it has to work, right? I mean, so we should remember that uh, it is, of course, not a guarantee that it will work. We have very good hope and we are confident there's good reasons for it to work. And that's why we are committing ourselves to it and moving so fast. Um, but it has to work. And if it works, we'll be indeed able to vaccinate a lot of people. The truth is you don't have to vaccinate the entire population. You tend to focus on the population at risk, the healthcare workers, the people who have underlying conditions. And then over time, you can vaccinate uh, a greater proportion of the population. Uh, and then you stop the disease when you get to about two thirds of the population that is immune to this virus. Developing herd immunity, um, to your point, uh, you reiterated there a few times that this vaccine may not work. Can we just get a sense of, I know you're seeing human trials at the moment, we're then potentially talking about deliveries in September. Is that enough time between ending trials and getting these vaccines out for use? We're talking yes, you know, weeks. Yeah, actually, you know, we are actually trailblazing here because we are not following the standard process. We are partnering with regulators, both in the UK and in the US. We're working hand in hand with the FDA. We are sharing data uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, on a real-life basis, and, and basically they're committing, committed themselves to help look at our data as they come, available, so that by the time we finish with our phase three program in, in August, they can rapidly approve the, the, the vaccine for emergency use. Are you worried that we haven't, because of the desperate need, taken enough time to challenge the virus to make sure that it's something that will work and that we can trust? I would say we are not cutting corners. We are actually moving fast because of this partnership between the regulators and, and uh, the Oxford group and ourselves. Um, but we're not cutting corners. We're doing the clinical work that needs to be done. We've done the preclinical work. We're now doing phase one, two. We're going to do phase two, three. So it's a completely standard program. It just happens that it, it's done very quickly with a lot of resources involved, a lot of passion, a lot of focus, and a great collaboration with the FDA in the US and the MHRA in the UK. This is a global problem. You're talking about one billion doses, which is exceptional, but we have, what, just under eight billion population. How does the licensing deal work? Can we see other big manufacturers around the world Pfizer, maybe some of your biggest competitors, also ramping up production at the same time if this vaccine is successful? 
Yes, but you know, I think in this instance we are competing against the virus, not against each other. Uh, we at, uh, at AstraZeneca are doing this as a as a for no no profit, uh, and I'm sure other uh, other manufacturers will do the same. And we need several vaccines, so we're not really competing against uh, one another. We're really trying to bring several vaccines so we can vaccinate as many people around the world as possible. Uh, one vaccine will not be enough. Number one and number two, I think society needs to bet on two or three different technologies. So to hedge your bet and make sure at least one, maybe two, maybe three type of technologies uh, succeed. So here we are really all trying to do the same thing, which is to bring a solution to this terrible pandemic. Yeah, everyone trying to do their best. So fantastic to chat to you. Fingers crossed. Thank you to all your team because I'm sure you're all working 24-7 and are doing extraordinary things and we appreciate it. Great to chat to you. Yeah, thanks Julia. Thank you.